Hello and welcome back to Linear Algebra. And first, as always, I want to thank all the nice people that support this channel on Steady, via PayPal or by other means. Now, with today's part 2, we actually start with Linear Algebra. Namely, we start very simple by talking about vectors in R2. Now, this set R2 is a typical example of a so-called vector space. In fact, it's a simple but useful example of this abstract concept. And later you will see, we will talk about vector spaces in general. However, I think it's very helpful to first understand what we can do in R2. Okay, now here, the first question that comes to mind is, what are vectors anyway? Indeed, in linear algebra, we will talk a lot about vectors. Now I can tell you immediately, vectors are not arrows. So don't get confused, when we talk about vectors, we don't mean arrows as you might see them in pictures, because we do mathematics here. This means, as you will see, that the notion of a vector is a very abstract thing that we can apply to a lot of things. But still, sometimes it's good to think of arrows because they can be helpful in your visualization. So imagine vectors as arrows, but don't say vectors are arrows. That's the difference. For example, the important calculation rules can be nicely visualized using arrows in a sketch. Now, essentially, what you will see is that we have two fundamental calculation rules for vectors. And the first one is, when we have a fixed vector v, we can scale it. And the scaling works for any real number lambda. Hence, the new vector we get out is scaled by this factor. Therefore, in our picture, the direction of our vector lambda v is still the same, but the length could be different. And now the second fundamental property is the addition. For this one, we need two vectors v and w. Indeed, in the visualization this means that we put both arrows together. So we just put the tail of one to the tip of the other one. And then we just connect the other tail and tip. This is the resulting vector we call v plus w. Ok, here you see, I showed you the visualization and the two calculation rules before starting with the definition. I did this because I want you to remember these two operations as our foundations. This is important throughout the course, even in the abstract case later. Ok, now before we finally go to the definition, I should tell you that sometimes you see an arrow above the letter V in a notation. Now, in mathematics we usually don't do that, because we know what the objects are. So there is simply no need for such a notation. This is in contrast to physics, where often the arrow above the letter carries implicit information. However, here in our course you will see this is not needed at all. Ok, then let's define R2 and the two operations. Here, maybe not so surprising, R2 is simply the Cartesian product of R with itself. In other words, R2 is simply the set of all ordered pairs of real numbers. However, now in linear algebra you will see that the elements of R2 are written in a so-called column form. This is not complicated, it just means for the pair instead of left and right we have top and bottom. For example, for 2 would be an element in R2. We do this because it's cleaner for the calculation rules and overall helpful later on. Now, because R is the number line, we can visualize R2 as a plane. To say it differently, we have a coordinate system with two axes. Then, in this visualization, we find our point 4, 2, roughly here. So you see, mathematically, this is just a point in the plane. However, of course you can also visualize this as an arrow, when you say how do I come from the origin to this point. Hence, you would say, you have to go 4 steps to the right, and 2 steps to the top. In fact, this is exactly the idea we carry over to the definition of scaling and addition. More concretely, for scaling this means, we just multiply both numbers by lambda. And for the addition it just means, we have to add both numbers separately. So you see, 
This is a natural definition when you have the picture in mind. Therefore, for the scaling operation, we take a real number lambda and the vector v in R2. Moreover, the two components of v we call v1 and v2. And then we can define the new vector lambda times v. There, we simply have the first component as lambda times v1 and the second component as lambda times v2. Here please note, in the first and in the second component, we have the ordinary multiplication of real numbers. Where on the left hand side you see, this is a new multiplication we defined now. Indeed, similarly we can introduce the other important new operation, the addition. There, we take two vectors from R2, V and W. And of course, for both we need the components. And then we are able to define the new vector v plus w. Again, it's an element of R2, so we have two components. And the first one should be v1 plus w1. And the second component is v2 plus w2. So you see, as before, in each component we just have the usual addition of real numbers. However, on the left hand side you see, we have to find a new addition. Of course, we use the same symbol because there can't be any confusion because the inputs are different. Okay, with this we have our first definition. The set R2 together with these two operations is called the vector space R2. Hence, we can immediately calculate in this new vector space. And then all the calculations make sense because we have to find the objects now. Some calculations and why this is interesting, I show you in the next video when we talk about linear combinations. Therefore, I hope I see you there and have a nice day. Bye.